patients say to me, what should I be looking for? Um, you know, what should I be looking out for? So there's good, there's good evidence, first of all, to reassure us all that when patients had have, a, have got a melanoma, they find it. They, they find it quite quickly and often find it before the doctor does. Uh, but th- it would be, if you were looking at your own skin, it would be either a new mole that you've never had before or an old mole that's changed. There's a general rule we use called A, B, C, D, E. And this is talking about um, a nice way of remembering what to look for. So we're talking about area, border, colour, diameter, and E, evolution. E is the key one I like to focus on because anything that turns cancerous has to grow. Be it on your skin, be it in your lung, it's going to grow and it's going to evolve. And as it evolves, it's going to change in appearance or it's going to develop symptoms. So on your skin, you could have had a mole all your life and it might suddenly change in size, it might change in shape, it might change in colour but it's evolving, it's definitely changing. Now, moles do change normally, you have to remember that. So as we get older, our moles do change. You tend to lose your moles actually as you get older, but you tend to form other things on your skin, which is what often worries people as they spot a new lesion. So what you're looking for is something that's changing and something that's out of keeping with the rest of your skin. So I always tell my patients, look at your moles, it should look similar to your other moles. If it's the ugly duckling, it's the one that stands out from the crowd, that's the one you need to be more concerned about. Mm. So that's the changing mole. Now, bearing in mind melanoma forms 60, roughly 60, 40 on a new bit of skin where there never was a mole. So really you should be focusing your attention more on the, oh, well, that wasn't there before. And only this week I've seen a lady who said, you know, this wasn't here three or four months ago and it's a melanoma. Oh, really? that, that, that fast? Yeah, so it appeared, it wasn't there before and... And, but, 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 but she spotted it. Luckily, she spotted it. It was on the back of her arm. So it's the changing mole or it's the new mole, and it tends to stand out from the crowd. Okay, and, and just, I just want to... Can we define what a mole is, as silly as that yeah. might sound? Because thinking about my own body, I've got lots of these... I don't know if I've yeah. that I can show you, but kind of what I consider almost freckles, yeah. really small ones. And then mm-hmm. I've got what sort of maybe one, maybe two sort of what I consider a mole, which are a little bit bigger. Yeah. So what is the definition of a mole? So a mole is, if you like, the layman's term for what a, a dermatologist would call a nevus. And a nevus is um, a collection of the melanocytes. Coming back to that same cell line, the melanocyte is made up into a nevus. So it's called, they're called melanocytic nevi. And they're different types they're the ones you have from when you're born or ones you're pre-programmed to have. So those are your congenital moles. And they tend to be smooth, dome-shaped, pink or brown colours. And, um, and, they, uh, and there's the ones that you then acquire as you get older. They tend to be the flatter patches that can often form around a congenital mole or they form as a new freckle. So, so those are, that's the, that is what a mole is. So it's a collection of the melanocyte. And that's why if the melanocyte goes bad turns cancerous it would turn into a melanoma and that's why we talk about checking moles Mm -hmm. and so you you talked about the ones to look look out for is the the kind of ugly one in the crowd Mm. in regard to sort of it being raised or bleeding weeping Mm. is that is that a common presentation so that's a good point so those are the symptoms of changes of the skin so you know if um if we were to look away from melanoma look at the non-melanoma skin cancers those are the ones that tend to have symptoms melanomas don't often have symptoms uh but you know anything that's scabbing bleeding and not healing that's of concern but that usually is the presentation of someone with a basal cell carcinoma so a good story would be i've got this spot on my head doctor i banged my head on a branch and it's just never healed and every time you know it scabs it bleeds but it never seems to fully heal and what they've done is they've knocked their head on a branch but there was a basal cell carcinoma there that they weren't aware of and they've knocked the top of it off and now it won't heal or they haven't knocked their head on a branch they've just got this spot that won't seem to heal so a sp- things should heal shouldn't they our bodies should repair themselves so if you've got something on your skin that just won't seem to heal that's something to get looked at because that could well be a form of skin cancer but it tends to be one of the low grade indolent types yeah. weeping yes so that would be the scabbing and the bleeding pain things shouldn't be painful on the skin so there are a few things that present with pain one of them is a skin cancer so if you get a painful lump um, you know but it seems to persist and doesn't want to go away with simple analgesia that's another sort of symptom that should pr- pr- make you think about getting a check